so this um, my first community call after after summer um, first Wednesday of of September was quite close to to August and uh, for some South region <laughs> countries was not easy to manage availability so let's uh, so we have um, so um, a simple agenda as as, as, as as for the other calls but I will just highlight some uh, some updates and some quick information about the the open air provide um, uh, service uh, we we have a main topic uh, we already addressed early this year the the broker service but as we have some novelties that will um, change a bit the way that you interact with the service we really want to present and to and to receive your feedback i hope that we can have a comprehensive uh, presentation about this and then we can have also your feedback uh, to showcase what are the the changes um, and then so if you have any specific issue so this is also the time to, to ask uh, um, feel free to, to jump in so first I, I do the, the updates then we have the topic discussion on the broker if you have any specific question about the broker we can address them and then at the end we have time for other for other questions uh, so we have the notes for the the meetings if you can you can andre will share it in the, in the chat but you can put questions in the minutes or you can make some comments there if we need to address something after after the call you can put it in the in the in the minutes we in this document we will we check it but uh, you can also write in the chat so feel free uh, to do that um, Andre, are we recording? Are we fine also with the recording? Everything is okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, I just wanted to highlight the three or four things. One is related with the broker. So, um, uh, Paulo will, um, sorry, Claudio, uh, Claudio, uh, my call, uh, our colleague from, uh, from um, PISA, from uh, CNR, is the, will uh, detail uh, what we did in the we slightly change a bit the way that we are um, uh, that we are interacting with the the, the, the users about the um, the enrichment events uh, not currently currently is uh, what you see in the in the provide is uh, so the same but um, we are already uh, we already discussed the changes we are not completely sure about if if we are doing the right approach in terms of usability for for the end users but we will have some changes now during october you will see it of course we will send the, that information but be aware that was one of the the coming visits to provide into the tab of the enrichment events you will see something slightly different Claudia will present that um we also did uh, uh we are also preparing some improvements regarding the registration workflow uh, in order to have better communication with uh, those that are registering uh, the data source um, in open air uh, but we did uh, an interesting uh, also a slightly change but it's quite important based on the on some uh, help desk tickets that we have some interactions we, we have with our aggregation team so now uh, when when you want to update something, uh, for example, when we want to update the uh, IPMH interface um, URL, um, if you have did some changes, you in the update there is a field that you can comment something. So you can write something explaining why you are doing this update. If if um, you need to explain something, okay, there is a a text box for you to write something. Which is good for us to to receive that feedback. Uh, sometimes you just do for kind of you are testing something or you did something and did, we didn't react properly. Uh, so now uh, we have a way for a direct shout. Uh, so you can write something uh, there, uh, and uh, and uh, we are aware of that. Uh, so when you perform any change in the, uh, when you update something your information or way IP image interface etc so uh, 
the other the other information is regarding the uses count service so um, uh, it's important to say that we are progressing with uh, the statistics in in provide uh, uh, as you you are aware we had some issues with some uh, repositories that were that have enabled long time ago the service so the the numbers the figures are not updated we only have figures uh, i think by the end of until by, until the end of 2018, 2018. Uh, but uh, we are progressing, fixing everything. So we are doing repository by repositories. For those that are that have enabled recently, uh, they don't have issues. For those that were one of the first comers and to enable the the, the service, uh, so we have some some issues. But I think they are almost all uh, solved. If you if you really check your data. In the user statistics, and you see that is uh, it's not uh, up to date. So please be aware that this will be solved uh, uh, in the coming weeks. So I have just checked with my with my colleague Dimitris, and they are doing that. I think uh, um, almost all are are are, 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 are correct now. Uh, but but uh, contact us if you have any issue. If you want to check it during this community call, just put the information in the in the, in the statistics in the, in the statistics in the in the notes, and we will check it. Uh, be aware that we have a page uh, with with use cases uh, and uh, some some use cases that we want to highlight are are, are related with the content providers and the way that the content providers are using. Uh, uh, open air uh, provide services um, so in fact we have two or three use cases there um, that are closely related with uh, the, the functionalities that we have been provided recently we had uh, a new one from uh, Serbia uh, we also had one from uh, from Portugal in the past from our national infrastructure in our network of repositories so if, if you have something relevant please share with us um, I'm, I'm 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 quite happy with an invitation that I received from the the repository managers uh, from Spain uh, that are part of um, uh, the network of libraries and uh, responsible by 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 the the working group of repositories in Spain. They are organizing a, a session during the um, it's it's after the the the, the open access week, but it's a, it's a, a session. Um, uh, on, on open air uh, provide service with real use cases from Spain, uh, October 29th. Thank you, thank you, Paco. And I, I'm quite happy with the, the, this kind of uh, activity. So feel free to organize like Paco did with other colleagues. Um, and if you need uh, any help from us, if you want to invite us, so we are we are quite happy to to support. Uh, um, Paco, if you want to share the link, feel free also to share the link. I know that is in Spanish, but people, at least people will realize what uh, what organizing. I think this is an excellent example of, of, of community involvement because there are some uh, people using um, provide service for different things. So this is the kind of use cases that we want to to have in the open air portal. But we are happy that people like Paco are organizing these sessions uh, and and. and uh, highlighting uh, the way that they are using open air in some case in some cases is perfect other cases have some um, have some gaps or some problems but uh, then we can with this visibility we also can push to solve it and, uh, and to do our best to have everything working well uh, do, do not forget about uh, sometimes uh, sometimes i receive some um, some um, requests of information be aware that we have this um, this page where we um, where we put the information about uh, uh, the aggregation and the content uh, provision workflows for you to be aware how it works. But the, the most important is that here in this page, we have a table uh, that we um, say when we will have the next update uh, schedule and uh, what are like the the two or three main highlights from the the last uh, update so uh, we, we try to have this 
properly update it. Sometimes we, we don't do it, but but usually we have information here, as you can see. So you can see also when we will have the, the next one. Um, be aware of that. Of, of that. So uh, we need to put this in a different place uh, uh, to highlight this, but uh, uh, be aware of this. Usually, if you if you in the, this this page is available in uh, in explore uh, also uh, uh, when you this is on the bottom of the search page it's not in, in the right place but we can put it in other places so the lack the last index information so as uh, some uh, as i receive from a request about that so be aware of that okay of course um uh, this is the uh, information about um, the general uh, index update uh, and status update for all uh, um, open air uh, research graph. But uh, of course, inside provide you have uh, you have the history uh, aggregation history that is I think working well. Uh, we realize that we don't communicate so well with the uh, end users, so we did some test user tests. And we realize that people that this is not clear. That page is not clear. It's not providing a clear information for the end user. We are trying to address that. Our design team uh, is proposing some changes for that specific uh, page in provide. Maybe we'll do uh, some changes. But uh, so be aware that we have the aggregation history for the specific information of provide. When was the last time that we have aggregated the information, transformed? And then we have this for the general information. No point. Be, be aware of that of that because sometimes I receive requests. There are other things that maybe we should highlight, but these are the the five um, highlights that I want to do. Uh, if you have any, so uh, Andre is also sharing here the links. If you have anything to to report, feel free. So uh, now we will uh, detail the broker surface so we will uh, remind you and us uh, how this service works uh, and then um, uh, Claudio will highlight also the based on the workflow um, that we have the changes okay there are some changes um, basically uh, due to scalability of the service uh, so maybe Claudio can explain better. Um, we were quite happy with the service. Okay, we need to have some improvements in terms of updates and things like that. Sometimes uh, repository managers found um, uh, old events that, in fact, are already updated in their repository, but they still have in the they still are in the um, in the in the open air. This is due to um, so it's impossible to have a clear synchronization between the aggregation and the changes that you do. But so we always need to take into consideration a, 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 a delay or a difference from one to to two months is, uh, between the the updates that you do and uh, how they visible or how are they visible in the broker. But now it this will be different. So Claudio. Um, I did all my information, so feel free to ask questions directly using your audio and connect your camera uh, to Claudio during the presentation or, at the, or in the chat at the end. Claudio, you want to? I can stop sharing my screen, or if you want, I can share the screen. And, uh... Hello, hi everyone. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. You want me to stop sharing the screen and you do it, or? Uh, well, actually, I think we are. I have the very same presentation, so uh, I can just ask you to move forward. No need to. Uh, okay. If you can just, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so, a brief uh, recap of uh, what the broker service, the Open Air broker service, uh, is about. Um, the main concept behind the broker uh, lies on the fact that um, among uh, the goals of open air is um, 
uh, to the, an increase of uh, quality on the information that we gather in repository. Uh, Open Air tries to uh, build an added value in terms of quality of the metadata records because uh, as an aggregator it's important to uh, build a uniform information space, uh, actually a graph of information, but uniformity is a key aspect here because uh, given the number of data sources that we have on board and the fragmentation of uh, formats and the nature of providers, uh, Open Air has to uh, solve quite important issues, I might say, in terms of uh, uniformity of the, uh, of the data. Just to give an example, the same uh, information uh, like uh, the authors of a publication can be ex exposed in several ways by repositories, uh, not to mention the references to projects or uh, um, the language of a publication. So there, are, there is a set of processes that are in charge for normalizing uh, these fields across the aggregation pipeline. So the goal of the broker is to uh, give this added value back to repositories so that uh, repository managers can cherry pick the typologies of enrichments that are more interesting for them. So in fact, in this slide, uh, the key message is about uh, potentially of interest to them because uh, we don't assume that every kind of enrichment that Open Air can produce uh, is actually interesting for a given repository manager. So uh, end of the line is that the enrichment of uh, the records in uh, the repository, the regional repository collection uh, is performed with extra metadata information. Can we uh, go forward to the next slide, please? So th this is uh, okay. This is the slide where uh, I try to sketch the main changes that we are uh, introducing in uh, the broker service uh, architecture. So uh, the moment that Open Air updates uh, the information in the aggregate, aggregated graph. Uh, we designed a set of algorithms that try that uh, are aimed to identify which are uh, the events that represents the enrichments that we want to uh, deliver back to repositories. These events are um, in the past were built uh, completely, and uh, I, I must say we. Uh, underestimated the amount of information that we were enriching from uh, repositories for the different topics, so the different kind of enrichments uh, that uh, we could synthesize from the graph. So in, in the previous implementation, uh, we built this full set of enrichments and we observed after, after some time that the way we designed uh, the backends, Elasticsearch in this case, uh, could not cope with that amount of information. So we decided to uh, limit the amount of events built by default to uh, the top 100 events per topic, per repository. So this will give a repository manager the possibility to preview uh, the set of events that Opener can build for them uh, still giving an indication for every topic on the number, the total number of events that can be potentially built. So in phase two, if a repository manager is interested in uh, uh, some enrichment aspects, can perform a subscription and for, from that moment onwards, the, algorithm, the open air algorithms will build the full set of uh, events for them that will become then notifications because uh, we have now someone that has expressed interest, uh, interest in, the, in some enrichment topic. Then, uh, 
this was actually the phase number three where uh, we match uh, the information built uh, by the events with the subscriptions. Then this information will be accessible now uh, for the first time through uh, notifications that can be explored both on the content provider dashboard user interface, but also consumed by a public API that will be available under API OpenAir U slash broker. We are finalizing the deployment uh, during these weeks uh, in the beta environment. Then uh, we will open a, let's say, semi-public session with some uh, pilot use cases, uh, integrate designing clients to automatically integrate these notifications in, into their uh, repositories. So this will uh, close the cycle to give back uh, in a semi-automated way, let's say, events back to uh, the repository collections. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, yes, so, oh yes, this slide was about a um, bit of explanation of how uh, the enrichments are synthesized from uh, the open -air graph. Um, as you might have uh, already heard in other presentations, among the processes that we run on top of the open air uh, content, there is uh, one named the application, which is aimed to uh, identify um, multiple instances of the same scientific products deposited into either different repositories or, or even inside uh, of the same repositories. It's it is based on different criteria that take persistent IDs as well as publication titles or the authors into account to uh, decide if two uh, scientific products are the same or not. But essentially, given that different uh, instances of these uh, bibliographic records can expose different uh, pieces of information, since uh, the algorithm produces as an output a group of publications, let's say, we can uh, identify which of these have some piece of information and the other does not. So thanks to the provenance information that accompanies every record, we can uh, synthesize uh, the enrichments for every repository that takes part to a group of duplicate records in the graph. So this is the baseline for uh, the methodology that we implemented to derive um, the enrichments. Then, how we categorized this uh, data. Given that some uh, records in repositories might already have persistent IDs or uh, open access versions, we decided to uh, categorize them into more and missing, giving the flavor that we are suggesting more of uh, subject classifications or more open access versions or uh, information that was missing in the original collection, like uh, your, uh, your publication for these repositories doesn't have an abstract. So we can provide one because we got it from, I don't know, from Crossref, for example. Uh, there is still a set of categories of topics that are have been available for some time now, uh, only in the beta version of the broker. Uh, as Pedro highlighted, if we remember in the last community call, uh, an evaluation was carried on for uh, links to software. Perhaps we can spend some word about it, Pedro, if something has changed in what we and learned from this process mm -hmm. and which are the next steps on that? Yeah, we need to take uh, some decisions about this. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. But then since... The issues uh, going to software is those, uh, uh, or the, the one related with mentions are, um, because in, in some cases uh, we don't, they are not really um, com um, supplementary software, it's just a kind of 
mention that we we had in the in the publication or in the mm -hmm. data set. Yes, perhaps we sh could re re continue th that discussion because uh, mm -hmm. many of the decisions taken by the algorithms that we implemented depend on the semantic of the information yeah. that we find in the graph. And since the semantic depends on the precision of the mapping layers that we have uh, filtering the information from repositories from uh, large collections like Crossref, perhaps something could have been changed from the last mm -hmm. time. So yeah, now it's... perhaps it's more likely that we can deliver more precise information. Yeah. If people are interested, we can, uh, at the end, we can share uh, some results just for people to, to see it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then and we can decide what to do. Yeah. Thank you. That's... I don't remember if there was more. Oh, yes. Last but not yes, least, yes. <laughs> the concept of trust. Yes, it's important because, uh, for example, uh, references to projects uh, are indeed uh, acquired from repositories, but a considerable number is also produced by automated algorithms. These algorithms are uh, not 100% precise, so there is a margin of uncertainty in every uh, let's say inference process that implements heuristics. So it's important that uh, the data that OpenAir produces uh, reflects this uh, degree of uncertainty. So that's why in the content provided dashboard, before creating a subscription, you, uh, repository managers has the possibility to play with some slider that uh, allows to filter uh, according to this trust information, meaning that the more you slide towards the one, the more trustable this uh, information should be according to the confidence level generated by the algorithm. Uh, yes, this is the least. Some examples of the... The numbers, some of some of the numbers that prove that uh, it's not easy to. No, uh, actually, I don't remember when we updated this table for the last time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but this probably is, uh, probably we run uh, we updated the events uh, in production at least uh, a couple of times since we built this table together, Pedro. So yeah. perhaps we can revise it. Yeah, but the numbers here are not uh, are not relevant. It's just to um, okay to list all the all the types of uh, of um, events that we have that people will have uh, mm -hmm. the sample of um, the top uh, one hundred uh, events enrichment events for each, and then they can decide to subscribe uh, for the different. Uh, Events. Okay. Orchid. Orchid is already available. And then we have the links yes. to software that we need to, to address. Maybe we can uh, address that, that part. Okay. Uh, yes, these were op still open questions from the last community call, if I will, rem re will remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of them are still only ideas, as uh, th the developer teams behind the broker service uh, in the past months uh, have been uh, working on the re-implementation of uh, the algorithms to generate the events following up the release of the extended opener graph that is now available in production. And since uh, that task has been a quite uh, important leap ahead in terms of technological upgrade, it has uh, drawn uh, essentially all of our resources for many months. So these uh, ideas that we got on the table stayed just ideas <laughs> and are still ideas for the moment. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, but we we share it with uh, our yeah. our user community, which is important. So in indeed, order for indeed. them to, to be aware of that, we want to have a kind of metadata alerts apart from those notifications that these are a result of subscription of event uh, enrichment event subscriptions. We also want to have kind of alerts, metadata alerts, sending to all repository managers. Uh, we know what we want to do. Uh, we need to time <laughs> to do <laughs> what we need. We need Indeed. To, yeah. Okay. So um, thank you, thank you, um, Claudia. I think what is important. I will put the slide here. Uh, but I think this is what I, I ask you all to to understand and to check if it's clear for you. Uh, please please uh, put put uh, your comments or just to turn on the microphone and share with us. So. Uh, this is this um, uh, two steps that we have. This these different phases that we have here, uh, from the time that we just uh, generate, uh, let's say, 100 events per per per, uh, per 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 topic of the enrichment. Uh, we share it to you. We also identify uh, the number, the total number that you you have that you can expect to have for that specific topic. And then it's in your side. You decide to subscribe or not. And then if you subscribe, you, we will generate those, those events. So, and with this approach, as, as Claudia said, uh, we can better cope with our scalability of our infrastructure and the, um, with our resources available for this service. Do you have any comment? In, in fact, this this was something that uh, so now we have this need, but uh, we are aware that not all, all repository managers want to receive and are interested in all the, the events. We are aware that they in some cases they are they are interested in three or four, other cases they are interested in more. In some cases they just want to receive links to projects and it's done. Uh, so for this from the, when we do this, when we put this change in production, uh, okay, then you need to subscribe to receive this information. This is what uh, what is important to say. But uh, Claudio, um, do you have any any uh, clear information for our our colleagues here, so that we are going to move the current um, the current subscriptions and put yes, it in yes, production with this new approach or subscriptions that were already performed will be uh, migrated to the new uh, implementation. Absolutely, yes. Okay, perfect. We'll try not to lose anything that was available uh, yeah. from the past, yes. Okay, so do you have any, any comment? It's clear. Um, You can turn on your microphone if you want, or just right here in the chat if you need to say something. I understand that this is something that you are waiting also to see in practice uh, in, in the dashboard, but um, at least we wanted to inform you that this is a, uh, a big change in the way that we deliver this service for, for you. Okay, thank you, Alexandra and John, for your feedback. Yeah. We also have uh, some questions in the meeting notes, not related to the yeah. broker, but we have three okay. questions. Okay, so we can uh, we can address it. Uh, okay, so uh, if we if we don't have any any questions, so I think uh, I hope that you we can uh, we will in the coming meeting uh, we will highlight this and may, maybe demonstrate. Uh, this uh, so for sure I think we will have here uh, an increase of of, of quality uh, in terms of service delivering and uh, okay then you just need to perform the actions that you need to do to subscribe and, and it's done okay thank you very much um, thank you Claudia for to support us with this okay so 
questions. So we are here. We have some minutes for questions. Um, where is the? If we are not sure about the answer, we can address it later. But uh, let's let's have now. Okay, the first question is the statistic is in open UCT are not aligned with the statistics in open air. Okay, any better? Okay. Yeah, this is uh, right. I think you, you can help me also with this question, uh, Claudia, because we, you are aware of the timeline of this uh, change that uh, our colleagues in, in Athens are doing. Um, I think uh, from yes. Uh, let me open the link in the meeting notes so that I can imagine uh, better. Imagine what the question is about. Uh, so yes, it's a difference uh, between it's a difference between the, the the provide and the and what they see in. in yes, in, the uh, thing is um, currently monitor. Uh, but, which is the service where the statistics are uh, oh, exposed is a bit behind in terms of updates because uh, the backends are just like uh, the graph in explore was entirely uh, rewritten the same thing uh, is still being finalized for what concerns the statistics that are synthesized from the graph and uh, that part is a couple of months behind. We are having meetings basically at least a couple of times a week to coordinate the effort to finalize that work. Uh, so I think next Friday we're going to decide when uh, the full set of statistics will be available again through that portal. So it should start to receive uh, updates in line with the content updates that we push uh, to explore to the explore portal so it should be come back on track soon yeah great uh, if, we, if we have uh, any additional information or some so uh, we will make sure that um, our colleagues um, Anton is and Dimitris uh, that are in charge of that will be aware of your question uh, and uh, they can reply if needed. Yeah, and Brianna, uh, adding a new list of projects local funder is a very rare task and I have forgotten how to do it. <laughs> Please help. Okay. Yes, I think um, I think now we also are having in place some better workflows. So uh, you just need to send us uh, and contact. Uh, right now, the, the contact person is Ari. Uh, we'll reply here, and you can send the. Uh, in fact, is uh, Ari uh, for the list is Ari and uh, Miriam. So. Maybe we can put the emails here from Miriam from CNR. That is the person then that will check and uh, put the list of projects in our information space. And Ari will manage the, the test mining and things like that. So I will put here the emails. You know some of maybe you know the area, but I will put here. Um, so we have a new local funder from Serbia. Great. <laughs> no, no, no. The same funder, but the new call. Ah, the new content. The new ah, the new new projects. Okay, okay. So, so just send to Medium. It's done. I for forgot Ari, because Ari will interact. Medium will interact with Ari. Just. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Good, 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 good. I will, yes. I will contact. We are also doing. We are also doing the same for FCT. <laughs> uh, we did it last week. 
and uh, you see you see so yes, we are on the yeah. line <laughs> we are on, we are on the line yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> okay uh, okay what needs to be done to activate the skull Skolix api oh there's one test that interlinking services working okay okay here i'm not sure if i can help Claudio, maybe can help if not Claudio can uh, i'm not sure either because yes. um Scolix is a format and uh, it's implemented only for the moment by the Scol Explorer service, which is mm -hmm. a sibling aggregation system that has a different set of data sources, uh, different from open air, I mean, contributing to uh, building the aggregated information space. So, uh, in principle, to activate Scolix API, you have to be uh, provider to the Skull, Skull Explorer aggregator or be mm -hmm. part of one of the collections that Skull Explorer aggregates. So yeah. if this is the case, uh, perhaps some queries can be performed directly on the Skull Explorer APIs, perhaps. At least this is my take on the question. I'm not sure if I can go deeper. Yeah. But Jill, if you want to, to... To work on your microphone maybe we can uh, for example if, if you want to benefit for example to, to identify uh links between the different resources and between projects and publications and things like that maybe you want you want more <laughs> as you were mentioning scolix I, th I think you can uh, you can um, you can benefit from what we have in in the in the book content and also from the DOI boost data set, no, Claudio? If, if it... Well, uh, Skull Explorer only has links between uh, publications and data sets for the moment. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm saying that the, uh, Jill can benefit from our, uh, from all the links that we have in open air in our, in our, um, Yes, but not yet in Scolix format. Not yet in Scolix format, yeah. Okay. Uh, implementing yeah, yeah, the Scolix yes, 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 yes. is among yes. our goals, need... but not yet there. You need to do it programmatically to work with our, yeah, the way that we are mm -hmm. exposing the. Mm -hmm. Okay, not sure if it was helpful for you, but uh, feel free to to open your microphone. Okay, um, there is another question. So from Jordan, looking at um, open innovation in open air, I see that there is a working progress for broker service integration in institutional repositories um, yeah so what we can say about this Claudio we can say something from the because you are you are in fact the point of contact for one of these um, uh, projects from the tenders from the innovation tender yes I so know you are in contact uh, with you for science are you in contact or is Antonis? Uh, it's you no, it's uh, it last, the last call. I participated to the calls, but they were uh, organized by Alessia uh, with okay. support of Michele. And anyway, I know uh, that they uh, were interested as a pilot case to integrate um, a client on the, the DSpace uh, Chris platform, capable to automatically get the enrichments produced by the broker. So by uh, consuming the information from the API that we are working on. So basically they participated to uh, the design of the uh, metadata format and the methods implemented by this API. Yes, and this is being done by this in this project from For Science. So yes. Jordan, you can benefit from that <laughs> when we when it's done. And it's it, I think it's 
need to be implemented until December, no? December. The projects need to be finalized in December. Yes, yes. So let's say that by for sure by January next year you will have uh, information, but maybe. Uh, We will have, uh, I think we will have also uh, an open presentations from the, uh, from, from, from this, some of these results of this tender. So I think it's, it's good. Yeah, thank you, Jordan. Okay, so we are coming to the end. Uh, I'm just, um, so be aware as I am in the open air page, be aware of the the open, the public open air week next uh, next week. So we will have this um, this a set of um, different meetings. Um, uh, next week so we have some internal sessions but then we have every uh, afternoon we have public sessions um you can register you can check the the agenda so uh, we will start uh, with um a public section on the implementation uh, of uh, of open science and then and, and the open air within EOSC and the work with other players in the in the global scholarly communication um, uh, landscape, uh, in the in the second day uh, we have a public session on European national international alignment uh, with different uh, uh, people from from open air and from those that we are collaborating with from uh, other regions of the world. Uh, the work that we do together with Coar uh to engage in, in south korea and canada and in africa and in, in, and in different and in latin america also then a session on on provide related uh topics let's say one thing about the graph the open air research graph um, kind of status overview of the dashboard and uh, also um, a session on the open air guidelines this is on day three the 14th of october and then the last public session no no uh, two, two, two not the last one uh, the last one is on friday so open air for researchers and behind where we are highlighting all the rdm services uh, that we have for researchers Amnesia as you know, the Argos uh, on day four, 15th of October, and, and um, on Friday, uh, we will have on another service related with the um, Connect service, building open science gateways to open and linked research outcomes, um, where we have different use cases. So, for all the, um, the general assembly public sessions we will have several use cases to be presented so feel free to join this is an open session targeting different um, areas of the work of open air and the collaborations we had uh, within europe and and in different parts of the world so be uh, sure that you are welcome to this um, to this uh, session okay to this week with five sessions <laughs> um okay and um not sure if there is anything here in the chat no so next call november 4th okay same time of past two central european time on the first wednesday of november um and uh, do not forget to follow the newsletter or to subscribe or to invite others to subscribe the newsletter we send it every month uh, in the first week of of the month uh, with the uh, different news about um, 
this uh, the, the open air provider services and related services so many thanks for your participation i hope that was useful if you have questions put it in the in the notes we will check it during this week and uh, if we have um, if we have more inputs from other colleagues that are helpful to reply your questions we will uh, we will send you uh, a message okay uh, to highlight that we have answers in the notes okay thank you very much um, and see you next week <laughs> for Samsung or, or in, in one in one month in, in the other provide community call thank you very much for your participation bye bye